All right. Hi, everybody. This is School Bus. Rolling out here on Cliff. And this is the start of my new series on kind of going through and doing in depth tank strategy. And I'm going to focus for a while here on Tier 6. And then we'll kind of see how this goes and we'll, we'll work from there. So the first thing I chose is a tank that I'm actually working on grinding right now. And this is the tier 6 Italian medium tank, the P43 Biz. The P43 Biz is the tier 6, the P43 is the tier 5. And there's nothing very remarkable about this tank. It's not very fast, it doesn't have very good armor, but then when you get to the gun, the gun is amazing. And generally, when you think about armored vehicles, and this isn't just in World of Tanks, but this is in real life as well, you really have three main areas uh, that you're going to be comparing. It's going to be speed, armor, and firepower. And this one is a strong one in the firepower department, as we will see in the subsequent uh, games of this tank that you see both today and probably in the future. But first thing kind of how I'm playing this and starting out here is I want to come up to this ridge and spot and so the T3485 went high he's getting good view from there I was going to go up to the bushes do some spotting but then I got proxy spotted so I needed to pull back so now I'm just trying to be patient and kind of holding off here and while I'm doing that let me talk a little bit more about the gun. This gun has a DPM that exceeds tier 8. Uh, it, the, the premium tanks specifically, but even just in general. Tier 8 90mm gun tanks, you're going to be looking at more like 1800 to 2000 DPM. This one, as it sits here right now, is... <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, I got a cold. Uh, this thing's sitting here right now at about uh, 2300 DPM. So a lot of firepower. Now there is a catch, and the catch is as lousy penetration. 140, hit the 2 key, you can get up to 180. So you've got to make your shots count, not hit armored surfaces, and you're going to see me make sometimes those mistakes, other times it's just RNG, the shot doesn't go where I wanted it to go, and as a result, um, it bounces. So I'm trying to bait this IS to come back. And in my notes of when I played this game originally, I remarked that uh, this game was one where patience paid off. Because behind me, I have my buddy Mother Goose and his Jagdpanzer IV. And so he's able to provide really good cover to anything that assaults me. So I'm going to stay behind this rock for a while here. It protects me a little bit from artillery, and it protects me a lot from the guns that are creeping over the ridge. So I'll just keep hanging out here. Unfortunately I'm lit again so I'm just waiting for the artillery to come in. And this thing's an artillery magnet with its lack of armor on the top or really anywhere. Uh, it's not very fast and it's kind of fat. It's got a nice low profile. Alright, get this guy tracked and unfortunately he still had a kit. That would have been nice if we could have just finished him off. Can I squeeze a shot in? Yes! But unfortunately we lose the Churchill. But artillery hits the IS. And my rock protects me. Which was wonderful. Give the rock a kiss and let's maybe start thinking about, once we go dark, moving out of here. I mean, the risky thing is I'm still alone. I do have Goose. But he's not necessarily going to be able to kill everything fast enough if they all came over the hill at the same time. <coughs> now what I see is that LTG moving up. And I'm hoping he gets some vision. Because if he does, that might tell me a little bit about what's going on on the other side of this hill. There's the IS. Ooh, there's an Uni working his way through the valley. going to have to keep an eye on him. And we still don't know where the light tank is. I really don't want that AMX shooting up behind me. Oh, there we go. Yeah, with the auto loader, the auto loaders in general can be a problem with this tank, with its lack of mobility. I don't get to finish the IS, but let's see if I can get a shot at the 1375. Dang. That, that missed. V 
very, very nearly hitting. So Goose has radioed me, said he is working his way over, so that's good. Right now what I want to do is figure out where did the Uni go. He almost looked like he was headed over here to climb this cliff, but I can't imagine that would work. There he is, nice flat side, boom. Get a nice nominal 246 damage. A little more spotting. And you'll notice the damage racking up here. I honestly don't feel like this was a great game, but here we are already sitting at 1100 damage. And keep in mind, this is a tier 6 tank. This is not a tier 8 tank. And I, I think of my E8, which I had an insanely high win 8 on, the E8 being the American Sherman tier 6, uh, I, uh, I worked hard with that thing to be knocking down say 1100 damage per game and I think if you go out and you look at what nominal is for this tank I think it's like 700 damage something like that so we are uh, well above what the uh, the nominal is I, I don't know why the nominal is that low other than to say maybe when the tank originally came out they set the win 8 number they obviously had to approximate it somehow and I think they approximated it a little bit low now I kind of make a mistake here. I'm really wanting to go get more damage done on the artillery, which that damage number is now up to 1557. Pretty sweet. I should have just gone into the cap circle, and I don't do that. I mean, it's a good habit to not give away your position by going into the cap circle, but I just wasn't thinking here. Could have gotten a little bit more experience, I suppose. And now I'm hoping to maybe get a shot in the M12, but nope. Too many things shooting at it. So, there's our first look at this tank. Um, a respectable game, like I say. There was nothing fantastic about it, but this thing certainly put its gun to use. Let's go check out some other games. Alright, next here, we're on Serene Coast with the P-43 Biz, the Tier 6 Italian Medium. And this battle, things are going to go pretty quick. And right now, Goose and I are talking through, we're bottom tier... But we're looking at the lineup and saying, gosh, you know, the other team doesn't really have anything fast to go and get to the CB1 location. So we decide we're going to go for it. And again, speed is not this thing's forte. The good thing is it has a pretty high speed governor, which I'm really bummed that Wargaming got rid of showing you what the top speed is for your tank down at the bottom left and it just shows you what your actual speed is. I, I do kind of miss having that ability to see what the uh, like or, or to see like what the tachometer was and all that stuff that they, they got rid of that. But I digress. We're heading over here. Now we finally have a little bit of speed up and the pros and cons of this thing moving to a, a location like this where you're cresting a ridge the gun depression is okay it's not great I think it's seven or eight degrees it's not a ten degree and then again you don't have very good armor you don't really have a substantial if any mantlet it's just not going to be a good ridge working tank in terms of being able to defend itself the positive aspect is it can spit out bullets really fast and that's what we're gonna do here so first thing I got a nice shot on the T-3485 pretty close to nominal I track him he hasn't moved he fired I take a nicely aim shot and he's down my fear right now is the revelry say artillery and if there's any other TDs over there and that was that was a bad shot. I should have waited just a little longer for him to do <coughs> that. But look how fast I'm getting these shells out. I think I looked it up. It's able to get a shell out every five and a half seconds. I was hoping that would go into the LFP, lower front plate, but it didn't. That one did. And there we go. That is a textbook overmatch. Now, when you're in an overmatch, don't do anything dumb. Unfortunately, I do something dumb. 
but typically on this map what I would do in this situation with the way you see all the chess pieces out on the board so to speak I would head south and go underneath the rail crossing so cut across at E4 I didn't do that um, I go straight out the enemy base now at the time the reason was there did not seem to be any that was cool I did at least kill that guy because the FE4202 had headed out he wasn't getting fired at I thought everything was gonna be okay and to be honest it it, it is it was but I make a miscalculation here with the OI I think that he fired but he didn't right there I thought he had fired but he hadn't that was somebody else who had fired not the OI the, the OI <laughs> combined OI and OI so uh, lesson lesson learned um, recognize your gun sounds I think his gun would have made a louder deeper boom than the one I heard it must have been the T-3485 that fired so bad day good news is for this game we go on to win it Goose continues to uh, move along with uh, his P-43 and has a pretty good game so that's it for this one let's go check out another video alright here we are in Ensk again Goose but we're joined this time by Tow Truck so he's running the heavy tank the OI that just annihilated me in a uh, previous game this evening and then we got Goose and I still in our P-43s I did not want to go field because I just don't like going field especially in something that doesn't have armor because I feel like I get sniped from the distance all the time so what I wait for here is the makings of a city push now we obviously we're in correspondence with tow truck he is going to go in pretty aggressive and so our plan is goose is going to take the far line along the railroad i'm going to take the mid line and we're going to see if we can get into a flanking situation so i don't want the cheeto to push over on me goose is set up to cover me and now I can just start poking in here and taking some shots. So he's not even looking at me, which is pretty fantastic. And Goose finishes him. Oh, Hellcat. But hey, he's got the small gun. So since he had the 76mm gun, he only did 112 damage. So I go ahead and poke out and take out Cheeto. The Hellcat does not try and push back on me. So now I decide, okay, they're expecting me to continue to push through there. I'm not going to play into that. If Maybe they aren't paying attention to me, but I'm assuming the Hellcat is expecting me to push there. And I don't. Instead, we double our effort over here. And I don't know what I do here. I just... Uh, I needed to hold that shot. And you see that? I actually bounced something. You don't see that much in this tank. So, But uh, you do every once in a while get trolled by the gun. And I totally got trolled by it there. And there's a good example of artillery. Bishops don't have a terribly high alpha, but he still managed to do 200 damage. And bishops fire really fast. And that time I held my shot too long. It was close. But tow truck took care of it. So right now we are operating a great city push. And you'll see some stuff in the chat where they're like, hey, you guys can't read a map, blah, 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 but it's called strategy, folks. Sometimes <coughs> you just have to have a strategy and see it through. Now this is where things get a little questionable. Very similar to the last game. That's why I chose these two. Where you're moving into the enemy base, and that can be a trap. So, we're being a bit cautious here. The question is, and what I'm waiting for as I'm dueling a bit with this uh, 301P. Now, there was a situation we actually did manage to bounce something. 
I'm waiting to see if the enemy team comes back or if they just push into our base. And it looks like there is an indication that they are actually going after our base, which is what I was hoping. Because what it means is their team's divided. We know there's three tanks over here. Now we see there's two over at the base. And that leaves, I think, just the T-67. We don't know where he's at. And the T-67's over at the base. So, do you see what the enemy team did? They split their efforts. Half of them went one way, the other half went the other way. And that probably wasn't a great idea. Now, that being said, our team, we kind of did the same thing. But we also had superior numbers. So, we could afford to split. Now it's just mop-up time, finish these guys out. The BDR and I are both dealing with the same problem. Our guns do not have a real great dispersion. His being worse than mine, though. But incidentally, we both have 90mm guns. I don't know exactly how the stats work out. So here's a situation where you need to be careful with this tank and its low penetration. Even something like a T-34, unless you're very close and shooting straight down into that front plate, you're going to bounce. Maybe you could get through a hatch, but you do have to be careful. You've got to look for the weak points. And uh, there's another victory. And that was actually pretty cool because between all of us, we, uh, we had... What was that? Uh, eight kills for the team. So that was pretty sweet. So I'm going to continue to do some videos on this tank. I hope you enjoyed episode two of Tank Strat. Let me know if you're liking this focus on tier six. I will certainly keep it up. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And thank you to the 36 of you who have subscribed so far. And I hope more of you start clicking that subscribe button. Have a great day.